Roberto Martinez served for 18 years as the director of the U.S.-Mexican border program of American Friends Service Committee. His life has been an inspiration of a courageous profile as a human rights activist. The gentle and courageous man joined the Border Angels to continue the struggle for human immigration reform and the end to migrant deaths. In his great spirit and commitment, this award will be presented to Josefina Lopez, but first, Ms. Yolanda Martinez. Behind every man, there's a great woman. Thank you, thank you very much. And um, Yesterday when I saw uh, the newspaper, whatever day it was, and I saw Enrique and I read the story, I actually got tears in my eyes and, and I went back a couple of years to my loss. And people are always asking me, I've been interviewed many, many times by authors and news uh, reporters, TV people, what made Roberto do what he did? He, he was cussed out. He, uh, I mean, one time we even had, um, excuse me, dog shit all over our windows in our car. I mean, the Border Patrol uh, always harassed us, and we're, we're U.S. citizens. I mean, a lot of things happen, and everybody would ask me, what made Roberto do it? And you say, who knows him better than me? I still don't have that answer. Um, it's nothing I can put my hand on, but as I read about Enrique, I, I just came to the conclusion it's something in their soul, and I think we all have it, but we direct ourselves to do our jobs, and Roberto was very fortunate enough to work for a company that um, allowed him to do this and, and expand the program that he did, not only um, with the migrant workers, but police brutality and injustices in the school system. And, you know, I have to say, he just didn't do it alone. I think somewhere, every one of us at one time or another has picked up that banner and marched with him or at some other function that we felt deeply about and we feel deeply about it because when you hurt anyone else, it's like hurting us, but when they're Mexicanos, it hurts us even more. Um, I, I, I miss my husband very much, but I, I hesitated on coming here tonight because, like I said, I go back and I do have my blue days where I really, really miss Roberto. But Enrique and Roberto got to become very, very close towards the end of his life. And I, one conversation that we had as he had his first stroke was, God, I wonder what's going to happen now. You know, there's a lot to be done yet. And I remember um, talking with Roberto, and I said, well, you know, David, he's younger than you, and, and David Valladolid, you know. And, you know, he can, he can work just as hard as we do. And then uh, he goes, yeah, but he has his job. We need somebody to do it like I do. And I go, first of all, he's going to have to be a bachelor. Ladies and gentlemen, has Enrique gotten married yet? <laughs> okay, <I'm looking. laughs> so it takes a lot out of the, the family concept. It really does. But if you don't support your man, then you might as well not be married. And, and uh, yeah, I, I put up with a lot of stuff going to family functions by myself because Roberto was on the border or being interviewed or he was in Philadelphia or Washington or someplace. So you do lose a lot, but I'm very grateful for the time I had with him. And I know Enrique has picked up his shoes and walked in them. And I am so grateful to see that so many people are here supporting him in the program and the work that he does because it's a hard job. Thank you, Enrique. Thank you.